Okay, so the next thing that you can do instead of that is you could make menu buttons. And so we have, we'll go ahead and leave it below the header, but instead of the nav menu style as a single bar, we should select individual buttons. Now that individual buttons automatically put space in between each one of the menu items. So the chances are, with that additional space, our stuff is too big. So we need to reduce the amount of padding in this. And in this case, then, uh, we can choose what our button width is. Now we can make that button width a fixed width so that every button is exactly the same width. Or we can make it a variable width so that every button has 70 pixels of mar padding on each side. So if we take this down to 50 pixels of margin on the, or padding on each side, all the buttons get smaller, but they aren't all identical in size. Right? If this said, it, it, well, they, they seem close because, but demo one and demo two are larger than, say, the blog is because the text is larger. The space on either side of the text is exactly the same, but the menu itself is larger. On the other hand, um, and you can, let's see, let's turn on our layout guide so you can see what's going on there. So, you know, this one is about, well, this is about 160 pixels, so is that, whereas this one's only 140 pixels, and the blog is, is really 120 pixels. Now, we could make them all 160 pixels if we wanted to. So instead of having a variable width button, instead of having a variable width button, we could get rid of that variable width and we could make them all a fixed width. And you might think that fixed width is going to be 160 pixels, but it's not going to be. Uh, it's close, but it's not going to be. And the reason it's not going to be, we made these things 160 pixels wide, but in actuality, it's 160 pixels plus the width of the padding that's inside of this. And since we've got about 30 pixels of padding automatically inside of here, I think we need to take it down to about 130 in order to get these things to be uh, roughly 160 pixels wide. So if we come down again and say 130 instead of 160 and hit save, all of our menu items should be the same width. And if we look at this, yeah, it, that's pretty dang close to 160 pixels wide. It might be a little smaller, but every single one of these is exactly the same size. Notice how the text has gone off to the left. Now the reason for that is that when you set the size of the menu item by margin, we're setting equal number amount of mar or padding. We are setting an equal amount of padding on either side, so it's automatically centered in its space. But if we don't set an equal amount of padding on either side, and instead we specifically set the fixed width, then this just sticks with the padding on the left and hangs to the left. And, and maybe you want it to look like that, but if you don't want it to look like that, you can come over here to this and say center the menu text and hit save. And now that menu text will be centered inside the button. Okay. Now let's, let's say that what you want is you, you like it this way, but you want this spread across the entire thing. So you want this blog, this button over here some way. You can either increase the size of these buttons to accomplish that, or you can in increase the amount of space in between the buttons. So in this case, we'll use menu spacing instead. And right now we've got about 20 pixels of, uh, well, the way the spacing is added is we've added uh, automatically 20 pixels of margin on the left-hand side of each one of these things. So you've got your 20 pixels right there, and then come over here, and then 20 pixels, and then 20 pixels, and then 20 pixels, and there's no margin over here. So if we wanted to, we got, uh, we've got about 120 pixels in five, 
things. Actually, it's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so six. So that is something in the range of 10 pixels additional. So let's give ourselves 30 pixels of left margin and see what happens. Yeah, that did not do it. We need more than that. So, in fact, I obviously I did my math wrong. And so if we do our spacing and we do, say, 50, that's probably too far, but let's just try anyway. Yeah. This is a bit of trial and error, obviously. And, you know, there's about 40 pixels on this side, and there's not quite 40 pixels over here. So we could decide to reduce this from 40 down to, say, maybe 35, which would maybe equal this out. And that's why we've got that left, the, the first menu item. So then the next thing we're going to do is we'll turn off those layout guides. And then we'll play around with, uh, we'll play around with rounded corners. So you can do something as simple as hitting 5. So you've got just a little tiny bit of rounding. Or you can go as 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 much as you like. Take it up to 20. And do quite a bit of rounding. And you can also add some drop shadow. So you've got two different kinds of drop shadow you can add. You can add a standard drop shadow, and then you can add a hover drop shadow. Now, the reason I do that is because, you know, it seems to me like it's a nice thing to have that shadow change when you hover over it. So what I've, what I've suggested or what I've done here is, you know, maybe you take three pixels of shadow width and three pixels of shadow blur and maybe, uh, let's see... We'll use that as the color. And then on the hover, we'll take it down to one pixel of shadow width. We'll have one pixel of shadow blur. And we'll make the color a little darker. So it looks like you're pressing in and it's getting smaller. And we hit save. We hit refresh. And so now you can see that, you know, you hover over this and uh, stuff changes. It's a little more dramatic if you, um, if you change up the color. So under nav menu, if you have your hover background color, and let's say we... Yeah, let's just do that. So now, not only does the shadow change and get smaller, but the color changes, right? That's what you have going on over here. Got a hover color uh, plus a change in the drop shadow.